Hi, this is Greg Koopman. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get a um, quite a bit done in Databricks without really knowing Databricks, um, just by knowing certain uh, features of Databricks, we can do quite a bit. And as a SQL a SQL developer myself in my past, um, and not a Python developer. Uh, I found it a little intimidating going to Databricks, um, but actually, if there's certain, if you do it a certain way, you can almost do everything in SQL. Uh, and I will, but in this particular video, I'm going to show you only basically how to just use the menus to import some data into a data lake, into a data lake house, and um, and actually be able to connect to Power BI to the Databricks and run reports. Okay, so let's just look at this diagram for starters. And what we're gonna see in the top left corner is a SQL Server database. Now, in that database, um, I have a, I actually, I mean, in that database, which is I call Activities Club, I already have a database, which I showed in my last video on Power Apps. And basically, it's um, it's about six tables. It's not a lot. I think the biggest table is about two hundred and forty thousand rows, and the um, and the players table is about a hundred and sixty thousand. I think, so it's really not a very big database or anything. But I just want to show it uh, how easy it would be to take it from the SQL Server, uh, Azure SQL database, and bring it in down into here into this all these are your databricks objects and bring it into the database uh, databricks world and then have it push it out to a its own cloud storage after that after that i'm going to go ahead and create a, a quick power bi report that connects to the databricks and um then go ahead and show you how easy that is also okay so Again, I'm doing this from a perspective of a SQL Server developer uh, or DBA. Um, so some of the you'll see really a, a skew towards that in this in this video. All right, so let's just go through the diagram and then we'll actually do the demo. So the diagram indicates a flow of data from the SQL Server. Okay. I, I will use JetBeans data grip uh, as the interface to this database. And from that, I'll go ahead and bring out, um, I'll export some CSV files. I'll export all the data that I want to use as CSV files into my local file explorer. Okay. And then we'll, from there, uh, we'll go into Databricks. Um, and actually, before we even go to Databricks, we'll also run something kind of at the same time or afterwards. Um, it's kind of independent. So basically, when you start Databricks in your own, let's say, and I'm expecting that this will be your own uh, Databricks installation, you'll have a workspace, okay? Uh, mine's called Test01. And from that workspace, then you'll go to um, the tier for SQL, for SQL, okay? And that's where the SQL analytics is to be done. And in there, you can go ahead and create a SQL, um, you'll go to the SQL warehouse and you do need to have your compute set up. So you do have to set up a, a cluster inside of this, um, this area. After that, you'll go ahead and go to the SQL editor and you'll There'll, there'll usually be a meta store already created for you, probably called Hive uh, Meta Store. Uh, if you don't create your own, you can just go ahead and use that, which I do in this video. In that meta store, you can have as many catalogs as you want. Now, a catalog in this case is really just a database. So I will show you, it has a SQL editor, it has an interface, you know, on the likes of, you know, many databases like SQL Service, Server Management Studio. Um, so it has a little bit of look and feel like that, so which is really nice. So you're really not looking at the files themselves, and not even the directories once you set them up. You're basically creating um, tables and working with tables 
just like you would do in SQL Server. Okay, so that's what this is, is made for. So after we create our, our database, um, then we're going to go ahead and import the files that we pulled from SQL Server into um, this database via the data import uh, wizard, which is part of uh, Databricks also. After it's brought in, it will be then pushed directly into the default um, default location uh, for for the cloud storage and for that particular database or that lake house, if you want to call it. And th at that point, it automatically will convert it to Delta and Parquet files. After it goes to cloud storage, then it's in there just like any other database and you can run SQL statements and everything else against it. Um, and then what we'll do is use a partner connect um, activity inside of Databricks, and that will go through and create a token, and that's what we're going to use to uh, to uh, connect to Power BI. And then Power BI will be able to access the cloud storage um, just like it does against a normal da SQL Server database. So you'll just see tables. Um, you know, catalogs and tables or databases and tables, and then you just create your own Power BI report, just like any other Power BI report against a relational database. So that's the idea. Um, so let's go ahead and start. We're going to go ahead and start with this area here, which is where we're going to pull the CSV files from the um, data grip. We're going to use data grip to create CSV files from those tables. Okay. So first of all, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the data that we're going to bring in. And this is a database that's called Activities Club. And these are the tables. Okay, nothing, like I said, nothing unbelievable. But so that there's a country, actually, I only have USA in there. And uh, then all the states in the country and the city and then players are attached to that. And um, these players have activity types and levels. And just to be very brief about it, the whole thing focuses around like a YMCA or something like that, where um, actually for any anyone who wants to go and play uh, like ping pong or paddle ball or tennis, um, that's an activity. And they and everyone is rated, uh, you know, according to their certain levels. And then they're put into the system. Anyone who wants to be is put in the system. Uh, and this is nationwide. And... Um, then when they if they want to play that day or that night they just call in and they can go ahead and um request to play that evening and then the people at the desk they can go ahead and contact all the other players with that have that are within that range actually of course this can be totally automated where you take the human out of it uh the the, the office worker out and just automatically um use some sort of a event log or a trillio or a combination where you'll you know you'll take the request in from a text message and then it will automatically read it understand who sent it then send it out to all the qualifying candidates who could possibly play that evening uh text message and then they would just go ahead and communicate through that that engine okay but anyways that's a little further than we need to know but uh, these are the tables. I've already brought in these three tables. I just want you to know this one, uh, this player table, like I think it's about 160,000, and this one's about 240,000 rows. They're pretty skinny rows, you know, um, especially this pay at player level, a lot of integers uh, fields. And so they actually, I was very surprised though, uh, to create a CSV, uh, it, it only took like a less, maybe less than a minute. Um, and then to bring them in to the uh, Databricks uh, only took less than a minute too. So that was pretty cool, which means that if we had millions and millions of rows, I think it would still be very quick. And I'm using the lowest engine, compute engine to save money, okay, like 75 cents an hour. So um, that's, I just want you to know that. So this is a data model. Also in the data model, I also took out a bunch of the metadata that I had stored in there, sys start time, sys end time, and last modified users. So if they weren't necessary, I didn't bring those into it for this uh, particular one. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and bring these other four in through data grip. And um, let's let you watch and um, maybe learn something there too. So here we go. Okay, so we're over here in data grip. Um, this is a JetBeans product. 
I made a video on it quite a while ago in 2018. I never renewed my uh, subscription to it, and um, but they're good enough that I can, could go back in there and retrieve uh, to the latest version that I paid for and can still use it. So that's pretty cool. And I, did, I didn't think about this because I was trying to export out the CS, CSV files in the SQL Management Studio, and I was having a little bit of trouble. Uh, actually, I couldn't figure quite how, how to do that. Um, I mean, I could do it through through back in when I was um, on-site SQL Server. Uh, you could do it a lot easier through the tasks and the export features, but uh, that's a lot more. It's more clunky. I've, I understand it. I've seen it done. I've done it once, but every time I set it up, it's just an extra pain that's unnecessary. I didn't want to also use Data Factory just for this little demo. I want Again, I wanted to show how simple it was. So here we go. I'm just going to do it manually here. So I'm just going to take the city ID. Okay, and we're going to run that. I'm just going to execute that. That. Um... So anyways, this is just like SQL Management Studio. Let me just go through this. And you can watch the video on data grips if you really want to. It's unnecessary. But um, whatever, you, whatever kind of... Uh, environment you can do to go ahead and get to the CSV. That's why I'm using this. Uh, this one makes it really easy. So, okay, so here's my city. So I'm just going to go ahead and execute that. Come down to execute. And these are the cities that are in that table. And it's running. Okay, so here's the, all the all the different cities. And they have a foreign key for the state pro, uh, pro, state prov ID. And over here you have CSV, right? And so you can set up the CSV like I did here, comma separated. And then here I say uh, skip computed columns. And I also, um, right here we went to configure CSV formats. And that way I could make sure that it was going to give me uh, comma separated, right? And... Um, we we're going to use a comma just because I know there's no commas in there and um, because I created the mock data. So then we wanted to make sure that there is that, that the headers come in because I want them to um, have that first row is header because then when I bring it into Databricks, I can just say first row is header there and it will figure out a lot of things, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I say, okay, here, so I have that configured right. All I do is come over to this, this down arrow and go to file, and I'm going to go to, okay, it didn't give me the path, so. Okay, so I put in the appropriate uh, path, and I just call this city CSV, and say okay, and then, it, Goes ahead and it, it does it. 342 rows. No big deal, right? Okay, so I'm going to the country. Of course, I don't have United States, but we're still going through the process. To file. I'll say country. We kept the same, the proper folder. And I said, okay, let's do state. And we guess that's about 40, 50 states, so we'll go ahead and run it. And we're done. Okay, so let's get a state province here. And, okay. And there's one more file, and that's our levels. Again, very small file. We did the other files before. Um, but I just take it for granted. Take it from me that they took very little time to do this, um, even though they were over 100,000, 200,000 rows. Okay, so I'm just going to run that. That's cute. And then I'm going to. So we have the interface a simple file. But it still has to be done. So that is going to be low. All right. So when we go over to the folder on my local drive, I put in the different, here are all the different tables represented as CSV files. Okay, so now let's see what we've covered here. So here, let's go back to our overall diagram. And we're going to go ahead and drill in a little bit here. Um, to this section here. We're in the top section here. So we, we had our SQL Server database. I introduced you to that. I introduced you to the date, data grip tool. And then we went ahead and exported the CSVs to our file explorer. Okay, so that's where we're at. Now, where are we going? We're going now to go ahead and we're going to dub, go into our Databricks, um, Databricks service, and we're going to, I'm going to show you what a workspace is, uh, then I'm going to show you what a SQL, data, uh, SQL warehouse is and how to get there, okay? So that's what we're going to do, um, and then we're going to come back to this diagram after that. Okay, now I'm in my uh, Azure environment. And I'm in my home area, 
So I see all my uh, most used um, services that I've used most recently. And of course, Azure Databricks is there. So I'm going to click on Azure Databricks. If you can't find it, then you go up here and you type in Azure. Uh, type in Databricks and it will it will show you the icon. But this isn't a course on that part. Um, we're assuming that you at least got to into Databricks at least once. So, and so um, we're going to click on Databricks. And when I click on Databricks, I want to see my workspace. Now I could have many workspaces here, but I only have one, which I'm calling Test Zero One. Okay. So in order to even get in Databricks, you must enter. You must be in a workspace. So let this could be dev, it could be production, it could be right test, um, it could be many things, or you could have different ones for different consolidate, you know, uh, subsidiaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So it's just a way to divide up your areas of your Databricks, you know, depending on how you know the size and complexity of your um, environments. Okay, so I'm just going to go into test zero one, and I'm going to go ahead and close this little guy and I'm going to close this guy. And then I'm just going to go into launch workspace. Okay. Here, there's some information up here. I'm not going to go into that. You can see that in some other videos. And the first thing we're going to do in, in this tutorial, right? We're not going to use, um, let me go ahead and open up the menu options here. So it's uh, expanded. So you have three different areas you can be in, data science, machine learning, and SQL. And of course, like I said, this was SQL. Uh, we're doing the, simple, the simplest way we can for a SQL developer to get started here. So we're gonna create a proof of concept. So I'm just gonna go into the SQL area, okay? Um, and here we are, we're in SQL. In the SQL area, we're in our workspace already. We're in SQL and now, we're going to go to um, SQL data warehouses. Okay, now this is a little weird. Um, I don't even know why they have them separated like this, but um, these are clusters. Uh, over in the other data science area, they have just the word cluster, compute, right? But see the icon here? It's the same icon as you'll see over here in SQL for data warehouse. And so when you click here, uh, it's as if they both have different kinds of clusters, although I, I don't think the clusters are any different. Um, but they have them set up that way. And this one, they set up an endpoint here. So I've already set up my endpoint. And you can go into creating a SQL warehouse. I'll just go ahead and show you the screen. But it just shows you like a cluster. It's a little different screen here. It doesn't, it just gives you like extra large. It doesn't give you much, like the other one gives you very heavy detail into all time kinds of cluster configurations. This one is like high level. I mean, 2X small kind of goes with the size of, you know, clothes. So it's just very uh, user friendly in that respect. I guess SQL analytics, which is what we're in, is supposed to be more for, not as much for the engineering as the other, but it's still very useful, um, very useful. You'll use all of it if you're a developer. Um, if you're not, you still might just use this. This is very, that's what I'm showing you today. And does scaling, what you gotta be careful of uh, is, um, you know, you go extra large here, you're gonna be paying some serious bucks. So don't do not do that unless you, you know. And also, so I, you, I recommend you go with the smallest, okay? I also say scaling minimum, minimum. And very important is this auto stop. Make sure that's set to, that the thing automatically stops, okay? Um, because if it keeps on going and you go away from here for three weeks, so you're going to have one heck of a bill. I mean, a big bill. I was in a course um, that I took and, and they turned on a couple things and I didn't know they were turned on. And I, uh, yeah, I suffered hundreds of dollars of fees just in a couple days. So be very careful with that, okay? You have to double check it, man, you know, visually double check this whole area. This should be stopped when you're done, okay? So you can go ahead and create it and you name it here, okay? I already created one. So here it is, starter endpoint. As you see, it's 2x small. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. It takes a while to start, so, um, but that's okay. This isn't production or anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start it because you have to have this piece before you can get, um, 
it before you can run the rest of these this uh, flow. Okay, to do the rest of this, so we're going to come back in about in about ten minutes because uh, it takes a while for this to to pump up and get started. Okay. So right now, I want you to know that we're right at this point here. Um, we have completed this part, this part, this part, and this part. We've got, to, we established our workspace and we now are getting our SQL warehouse set up. Uh, again, it could be called cluster in the, if you ask me. So you, we're basically, we're getting our compute ready. So the computer is getting its clusters ready. And as soon as it's ready to start, we'll go on to our next, our next steps, which will be here and here and here. Okay. So that's where we're going next. Okay. As you see, I'm back in the, um, the endpoint has started. And we can take a look at that. So you see it's running, as you see right here. So our next step is to go ahead and create, we'll go to SQL Editor. Okay. And from here, we're going to create, we're going to look at our meta store, our catalog, and the tables within them, which are down in here, right? So the default is here and it's showing some different um, tables. Uh, so I'm going to go back to Hive, just like this, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create a database or catalog. And they call it, they call it a catalog, but when you type it in, it's a database. So my database name is going to be um, demo, or I'm gonna call it underscore, I'm gonna call it one demo. Oh, it's going to take a numeric at the beginning, but let's see. We'll find out soon enough. I want it to show up at the very top, that's all. All right, it's successful. All right, so let's go over here and we'll go to, there it is, one demo. So when we go to one demo, we see there's no tables in there, right? And that's the whole point of this video is we're going to bring the tables into one demo. All right, so now how do we get to our next point, right? So we're sitting here right now. We got to get the data import wizard, and this is where you might get a little lost, okay? So what you're going to be looking for, there'll be an icon here, but basically it's on your starter page, okay? So let's just jump back there. And what we're going to do is we go back to, and this is a little weird, uh, you'd think it would be in SQL here, SQL piece. So we're going to go up here to where the Databricks is, to the beginning of the, the beginning, right? And here we're still in SQL, and it has its own wizards here, all right? But it doesn't have an import. So we go to the data science area, and here it is, the data import wizard, okay? Uh, there's some very good wizards here, by the way. This auto ML is inc incredible. You know, there's all sorts of good stuff here, but let's go ahead and, and easy, the easy stuff, easy way to do things. I mean, you know, of course you have to do a lot more things than that, but it's a good get getting started. So let's go to upload data. Okay. So now we're in the upload data, very simple. Go to browse. Now this will only allow me to bring in one table at a time or one file at a time. So it says you can bring in a CSV or a tab separated uh, table. So I will go to my area here. Okay. And I have them all under CSV files. So there they are, the ones I brought in from Data Grip. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and bring in, let's go in order. So we'll just bring in uh, activity type first. So it's bringing it in. It automatically has its defaulted to the first row contains the header. It's very quick. So here it is. So it also, um, and I'll show you this in a minute. 
It also can identify what the, uh, like here, identify that the activity type is a numeric and that the activity type name is character, alpha, alpha numeric. And same with description, okay, which I don't have anything for. So that all looks like it came in well. So let's go back. So I'm going to create an, uh, oh, now I create a table. It brought it in, now it's asking me, do you want to create a table? And where do you want to create that table? So my default is Hive Metastore, default, and then the name they're going to name is Activity Type. Now, I want it not to go there. That's why I brought this to the very top. So I'll bring this to the top. I want it to go to the Demo uh, Catalog or Database. I also don't, I don't use underscores. So I kind of like it like this. So let's just see if that's... It's only going to contain lowercase, so that's fine. So now we're just going to say create table, and I think everything is good. Let's look at advanced attributes. Column delimiter, automatically detect column types, which it already has, which is great. And uh, row spans multiple lines, which I don't have. Okay, so let's create table. So this process, once it's done, I'll do for all the other ones, um, and I'll put this in fast, fast motion so you don't have to watch it. Okay, that's done. So let's just go ahead and go to another tab. Let's duplicate this one. And we'll jump back over to SQL. Okay, so I go to the SQL editor. And I should see then, there's my demo. It's there, uh, still over there. And there it is, activity type, right? So that's great. Let's go ahead and bring it. I'm going to bring in all the other uh, tables and then be back. Okay, thanks. Okay, so it's finished. We got all of the tables over with no problem. And we're going to um, just do a little bit of checking here. Um, yeah. So let, we're right now it puts us right into the Explorer window, the Data Explorer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the Data data. Uh, and you go over SQL, right? Because that's the area that I'm working in, the tier. So here's a data explorer I'm talking about. This is what we're talking about. So let's go back up to our demo. And there's our tables, right? And here's some information about us, some details. There's where it's located, DBFS, user, hive, warehouse. Um, and so what it's doing is that there's a metadata server, virtual server that's running um all the time and it's stored and that's where this information is stored now these are called managed tables these are located on that server okay um generally when we build our data warehouses and our data lakes we'll probably be using an external where we're over on the azure storage um, blob containers gen 2 and we'll be building, I will be building them there. Uh, I think that's going to be cheaper and more, I can manage it a little better. So, um, but that's again, this is why it's so simple here. And we're not having to do any of that legwork of creating a storage account or anything else. It's doing it all for us right here and saving it out and pushing it and pulling it wherever, you know, to this point. But when you do an external table, you'll still have a meta store. So you'll still have this um abstraction layer on top of your data so you it isn't like you're going to have to you know when you, uh, power bi users come in they're not going to have to go figure out what you know storage account or what blob container it's in or any of that it's going to all talk through this area here um just like it would if it was going to sql server or to redshift or to any of them okay um Okay, so that's that. So let's just go ahead and take do a couple queries. So I'm just going to come over to SQL Editor. And here we are, we're in demo. So let's just go ahead and do a couple queries. I want to do some counts. So one thing you can do, actually, before I do the counts, I can go into Player, right, and... Um, well, over on Data Explorer, if I go into any one of these, right? So if I want to go in and look at 
go look at player, right? I can come here and I can go and look at sample data. So right there, it just shows me, gives me a little bird's eye view of what the data looks like. Okay. And then city, these are nothing exciting, but um, again, and there's your cities, your levels, your players. And so here's it. I think we just went to players to so pay your level. Um, again, you go to your sample data. Okay, and it has history and permissions here. You can set up permissions here for these tables for your users, uh, etc. Okay, so let's go back up to SQL Editor. I want to see some counts. So I'm just going to go ahead and just do just show you two counts. Uh, select count. Okay, I can't type. From and let's make sure I learn what I'm doing here. Demo dot demo dot. Uh, let's call player. Those are the big tables. And then let's do another select count from one demo dot player level. Right. These are the two big tables. These are what you would. And you know, it's an application. You would. You know, this would end up being your. Uh, probably your fact tables or at least a fact in one dimension table. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, okay, it doesn't like that. It wants only one run it one at a time. So let's do that. So I highlight that one and run there. So you see it's 152,000 for the player table. For the player level table, I guess 240,000. 244,000. So it's, you know, it's not huge or nothing, but it's still something, right? So um, those are over there in that, in those directories in, inside of the hive, they call it. And um, that's it. So we're, what we're going to do now is actually pull this data out and put it into Power BI. So now we've finished the import. The import here is finished. The metadata store, the catalog is created, and the tables are created. So all this is done. And this is finished because when we imported it through, uh, when we imported through the wizard, it went through the metadata store, identified, you know, where it's supposed to put the data and build the parquet and, and delta tables. So that is pushed over to that cloud storage. In this case, I didn't say Gen 2 blob storage or anything like that because it isn't. In this case, it's it's there over there on the server, uh, on the on the Databricks server. So um, that's where it is. So that's why I didn't put down Gen 2 blob. But generally, this will probably be Gen 2 blob storage in Azure. Okay. So then here, and that's done, and that's done. Okay. So everything is done now except for two pieces, which is right here. So these two, Power BI. That's the part we want to go ahead and finish up with, okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to try to get this data and access it from Power BI and build a report. So what we have to do first is go to Partner Connect here. So this is the easy way, okay? And, the, and it works well. So let's just go ahead this way and go to Partner Connect. And in Partner Connect, you'll come down here and you'll see this uh, Microsoft Power BI. Just click on that button. It's real simple. It's going to ask you what your endpoint is. And the name of my endpoint is Starter Endpoint, Raw Original, right? And if you have other endpoints, you can use one of those. But in my case, it's going to be Starter Endpoint. I'm going to download the connection file. Okay. So I'm going to download it to the area I've been working with. So I'm actually going to download it into my CSV files. Um, so I'm going to save it there. All right. So now it's saved, right? So at at this point, what I need to do is close this up. And I need to come over to my account and under user settings. So I have personal access tokens. So I'll click there. And I already have a couple. But I'm going to go ahead and generate a token now. Now that here you want to write it down because you're not going to be able to see it later, right? As you can see from here. So you need to keep this in a safe place, okay? To keep, you know, so you can reuse it. 
So I'm going to say generate. I might put a comment in here, and the comment's going to be uh, this is a Databricks POC demo for YouTube. Okay, lifetime 90 days, that's fine. So I'm going to generate it, and there it is, right? So that's the token. Now I need to remember that one. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it into a place that's safe. And I click OK. So now I have a, a, a token, and this is going to allow the Power BI to talk to the um, metadata store. Okay? Okay, so now we're back to the folder where we saved that um, that partner connect for power bi and here it is right here so all i need to do here so we're going to go ahead and double click on this file and when we go in it's going to open up um, the power bi and you want to be on the latest one or close to it uh, anyways you need to be somewhere october to 2022 somewhere in that thing uh, or later all right, so uh, September, I think, is also good, 2022. So now it's trying to connect, and it should come up on a screen for my credentials. So we'll see what it does, and there it is. There's my credential screen, right? And since we created that personal access token, all we have to do is click the personal access token, right-click and paste, and now it pastes it in, and I hit connect. And that's how easy it is. Very easy, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to see that Hive Meta Store, um, which is here. So you see Hive Meta Store. And then it's going to, you just click there, and it's going to show you all your databases. And in this case, I'm going to go to the demo, right? And in the demo, I'm going to open that up. And it's going to show me all my tables, right? So... I'm just going to click each one of them because I want all of them in my report. And I'm going to click load. So this is something I was interested in seeing how long it took um, to load from the um, Databricks into the Power BI with a little bit of data. I mean, not a little, little, but you know, a few hundred thousand rows of data. Um, and I think it came out, it comes out pretty quickly. So we're at what, probably a couple minutes. And it's done. In fact, it's done already. Okay, so that was almost a minute, maybe less. And there it is. It's already there for us, right? Okay, so here's all my tables. I can go ahead and go ahead and go to my model and go ahead and arrange these guys just like any other Power BI. And um, I'm going to clean this whole thing up here. Just look at this. This isn't a Power BI, a Power BI class. So but I'm going to clean it up and just show you, uh, you know, the speed, you know, how this is working against Databricks. Now, what we're doing is we're importing from Databricks. So once you've imported, it's all it's all in your memory, right? On your Power BI, it's Power BI's turn. It has nothing to do with Databricks after that, unless you're doing a direct query. Then the speed of Databricks counts more, you know, and see how fast it comes back and that kind of thing. But as far as an import goes, like what we just did, it imported very quickly. And now the rest is just database uh, related, just database, I mean, it's just Power BI and connecting your Power BI. So anyways, uh, let me go ahead and create something here. Uh, I don't want you to have to sit and watch. And so uh, I'll be back and we'll look at the results, okay? And, but basically we're here and we've got accomplished our goal. Okay, so I'm back and uh, it's been a half hour or so. It's making it look a little prettier. Um, but anyways, yeah, the, it's coming out very well. Um, the report looks decent. And so if you look at the model here, I just connected the primary keys and foreign keys together. Nothing special. It wasn't meant to be. But um, 
So with all that data in there, well, I think I got about eight or 16 gigs uh, of memory on my laptop. So it's not really that much, but it, it seems to be holding its own. Plus I have a, a recorder going and everything else. So it's um, doing pretty well. Anyways, uh, let's see. So this is what it looks like there. And my results are here. So if I click on uh, the United States and I click on, let's go to Wisconsin. There won't be too many people in Wisconsin. Well, and we'll go to Racine, Wisconsin, wherever that is. Probably lots of people there. And I'll go and I say, okay, I want to play table tennis. So there's uh, some people over there that are on level seven. Let's say I'm a level four. So I click on four and there we go. These two people are in that city and they're a level four. And so maybe I can call them. I'm out of town. Okay. And then if I want to play someone really good, I might go for a pro level, which, ooh, there's a lot of pros playing over there in Racine, Wisconsin, because it's so cold. People don't want to go outside. I don't know. This is all random data. It comes from, um, I use this uh, this company, this website called Mockaroo, uh, and you can get data from them and they'll just mock up the data. So I was able, like I said, I was able to get 150,000 random mocked up players names from there. And then the cities and the, the cities and the states and everything that it all is intelligent so it, it you know it knows that madison is in wisconsin and wisconsin's in the united states you get that for all over the world so i really highly recommend mock roof for um you know when you need to get mock data and you want to get a lot of it because you know when you're showing these things if you got to create the data it takes forever and you know you just don't get enough that much data but here it's it looks fairly impressive that you know you have this much data so if i go to utah I click on Utah. So I'm looking at all the people in Utah that are pros. And all of a sudden I got some real data to show. And, you know, it's more, it's just, and especially if you can get there, the customer, the client's data. Uh, now, if I want to look at handball, there's handball right there. Let's see if there's a beginner out there. My speed. My, my speed. I can't play handball. Okay. Anyways, that's enough of me talking. I think we're going to end the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. The, the main takeaway from this video is that there's some really easy stuff that, you know, features and Databricks that you can use. Um, and this is one of, this is one little thing. Also, you can um, use this kind of thing. Uh, use SQL, right? Use SQL developers. If you orchestrate it right, you can do almost the whole thing in SQL, SQL, with a very little bit of Python. Um, so you shouldn't fear it. And in what's happening when you're using that SQL, it's using Spark. And that's a big advantage of data. One of the big advantages of Databricks is it's using that Spark engine. Um, it's also using the storage, uh, which is really cheap, right? By using Blob Gen 2. And um, so that's really good too. So there's a lot of features that ML is super, the machine language. It has a lot of build-in frameworks that are excellent. And, um, and you know, don't be afraid of it. And I just hopefully this helps a little bit nudge you forward, uh, if, or at least give you an understanding of some of the ease that's out there for Databricks. Okay, thanks a lot.